Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I can just picture Jesus up on the mountain with his disciples. He sits down to teach, because when a rabbi was there to do some serious teaching, he sat down. And he had his 12 disciples right there with him, the crowd in the background, and I can just picture him sitting down, leaning his head back and smiling and saying, Oh, the bliss of, oh, the joy of, Oh, the happiness of the poor in spirit. That word joy is an inner happiness. Uh, the Jewish people used to describe the island of Cyprus as the happy island. And they believed that because they thought everything for happiness was right in the center of that island. There was no need to go out of the boundaries of the island because anything you needed was right there within. So the secret lied within. And so the joy that God is talking about right here is an inner joy. It is not based on happenstance or circumstance, but it is a joy that comes within. The secret is within. Oh, the bliss of. Oh, the happiness of the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit? You know, the Greeks used two words for poor. One of them was a word that meant that you work hard to earn a living. So you go paycheck to paycheck. I can relate to that word poor, but that is not the word poor that Jesus used in this beatitude. He used the word poor, tokos, which literally means beggar. And it also means one who is approached that pulls away in shame. And so Jesus is saying, oh, the bliss of, oh, the happiness of the beggar. The one who doesn't stand a chance. The one that has nothing to offer. The one that comes head down, hand raised, and says, have mercy on me, O God, a sinner. A beggar. Oh, the bliss of. Oh, the happiness of the beggar. For when he comes to God as the poor in spirit, covered in the depravity of his sin, with nothing to offer God, the Bible says, that the kingdom will be open to him. He's covered in his depravity. You know, you don't hear about depravity very much today in churches. Depravity does not mean I'm as bad as I could be. It doesn't mean that I'm even as bad as you. What it means is that when we approach a holy God, that when it comes to having a relationship with God because of the depravity of our sin, we are disqualified. So we come to God as a beggar with our head down and our hand up, have mercy on me, O God, a sinner, and guess what? He opens the door into the kingdom. Oh, the happiness of the poor in spirit, for he shall inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, the happiness of those who mourn. What? I just got in the kingdom? You would think if I just entered into the kingdom, it would be a party, a celebration. I would be like, woohoo! No, the Bible says, oh, the bliss of those who mourn. Why would the response of getting in the kingdom be mourning? Because when the door flies open, we realize that right in front of us, smack dab in front of our face, is the cross. And we see the cost of our sin. And that word mourning means to mourn as if you're mourning over a death. One time I heard a father laying over his cas the casket of his son, and he was mourning in a way. It was a noise that came out of his gut that I will never forget. And that should be our response. When we enter into the kingdom of heaven and we put our eyes on the cross and we realize it should be us, and we mourn over our sin.